everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. Have you ever wondered why one night your guiding might be good and the next night it's not? Or maybe you start off the night with good guiding and mid-session it turns bad. While there are many things that can affect guiding, the most common one is seeing. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So if you find this video useful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Now let's jump on in and talk about how seeing affects guiding. Let's start with what guiding really is. When you guide, software like PHD2 locks onto a guide star, calculates its centroid, and tries to keep that star centered on a specific XY coordinate pixel location. That's it. The guiding software doesn't know why the star moved. It only knows the star appears to be there now, and it used to be here, and that distinction matters. Under normal conditions, guiding corrects real mount errors, such as periodic error, polar alignment drift, and mechanical inconsistencies. These errors are slow, directional, and predictable. If your polar alignment is off, for example, the guide star will slowly drift in one direction. Guiding sees that motion and makes a correction. This is guiding doing exactly what it's meant to do. Now, let's talk about seeing. Seeing causes the apparent position of the star to move, even when the mount is tracking perfectly. The mount didn't move, the sky did. Atmospheric turbulence bends the light path, making the star appear to jitter, bounce, and shimmer. From guiding software's perspective, that motion looks exactly like tracking error. And here's the key point. PHD2 cannot tell the difference between mount movement and atmospheric distortion. Every time the guide star appears to shift, PHD2 plots a point on the guiding graph. Those little wiggles? They don't necessarily mean your mount is misbehaving. They mean the measured position of the star changed. Some of that is real mount error. Some of it is the atmosphere boiling. If we aggressively correct every single bounce, we're no longer correcting tracking. We're chasing the seeing. This is where things go sideways. When guiding reacts aggressively to seeing, the mount is constantly pushed back and forth, meaning unnecessary motion is introduced and corrections pile on top of atmospheric blur. The result? Larger stars, higher full width half max, softer detail, and worse images. And worse? The night feels bad. You might think, man, my mount was great last night. What happened to tonight? The answer is usually it's nothing mechanically wrong, the sky just isn't playing nice. Guide exposure length plays a huge role here. Short guide exposures capture every tiny seeing fluctuation which then produces twitchy corrections and amplifies atmospheric noise. Longer guide exposures, on the other hand, average out seeing which then allows response to real tracking drift and smooths the correction curve. Think of it this way. Short exposures react to everything. Longer exposures react to what matters. Multi-star guiding works on the same principle. Each guide star experiences seeing effects slightly differently. By averaging multiple stars, random seeing motion is reduced. Centroid noise drops and guiding becomes more stable. A great way to think about it, this is the same idea as averaging full width half max across many subs instead of judging one frame. It doesn't eliminate seeing, it averages it. Now, let's talk about min move. Min move sets a threshold. If the measured movement is smaller than that threshold, PHD2 simply ignores it. This prevents the mount from reacting to tiny centroid shifts caused by seeing. Here's an important clarification. MinMove doesn't make guiding sloppy. It makes guiding intentional. You're telling the software, 
only correct when it matters. This part's critical. Good guiding is not the lowest RMS number, the flattest graph, or zero movement. Good guiding is stars that are as small as the sky allows. If your stars are round, consistent, and your full width half max matches your seeing conditions, your guiding is working, even if the graph isn't perfect. Finally, if you've been following this series so far, you can now see how everything connects. Seeing limits resolution, sampling must match seeing, guiding must respect seeing, overguiding makes seeing worse, and chasing RMS hurts image quality. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and the support helps me keep the channel growing. Also, do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you find this video useful? How does seeing affect your guiding? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.